Now in this video, we're going to focus on solving our, quadra our quadratic equations by using the square root property. You might be asking, what is the square root property? The square root property says that if I have my variable x squared and it is equal to some constant, then I can come in, and it has to be in this form, then I can come in and take the square root of both sides to be able to solve. Um, another form of the square root property looks like x minus a squared equals k. Again, I have something squared equal to a constant. If it's in that form, then I can take the square root of both sides to be able to solve for my variable. And that's, again, what we're focusing on here in this, um, in this video. So the first example we have says um, 3x squared minus 1 is equal to 47. Now I don't have any parentheses uh, in this quadratic, and so I'm thinking that I'm looking for a um, square root form that's going to end up looking like x squared is equal to k. Notice that in both of my um, square root property, uh, formulas that we were looking at, we have the variable equal to a constant. I have one term equal to another term. And that's not what I have right now in this set setup. So if I were to add one to the right hand side, I would end up with 3x squared is equal to 48. Now I have one term equal another. So I'm closer to this form that I want to get my equation into. But I'm still not there yet because notice again that my variable has a coefficient of 1 in this case. Down here, my variable has a coefficient of 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3, giving me x squared is equal to 16. Now I have my quadratic equation in the form um, of x squared equal a constant, and I can just take the square root of both sides to be able to solve for x. Now the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 is both positive and negative 4. So here's my two possible solutions for my quadratic equation that I found by applying the square root property. Let's look at this one over here. This example has um, a squared term on the left, so I have something squared equal to a constant on the right. Okay, so it is mimicking this idea right here. Now since that's the case, um, I don't have a coefficient in front of my squared term. I have one term on the left and one term on the other side of the equal sign on the right. So I can just jump in and I can take the square root of both sides. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, I can't take the square root of a negative number. But yes, we can. We can take the square root of a negative number. It just gives us an, a, an imaginary number back. And we were never um, restricted in our answers that we could only give back real solutions. So we're good. We can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of this left-hand side, I get x minus 1. And when I take the square root of the right-hand side, the square root of a negative number is i, and the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. So I get plus or minus 3i for that. Now we're going to get x by itself by adding 1 to the right-hand side, and I get 1 plus or minus 3i. Now I can't combine these two terms because this one is real and this 3 is imaginary. So this is the solution right here. It's a complex solution. And notice that there are two of those complex answers for my quadratic. So this is as far as I can get it for this. Now this is the square root property that we are talking about in this lecture and or in this video. And the square root property is pretty handy for us. Uh, but it only, it's limited in its use because we must have it in this form, one of these two forms, to be able to apply it.